Hi guys, my name is Meera Aida and I'm a Formula 4 racer. First of all, thank you so much for having me here and it is an absolute honor to be able to share my journey and how I have faced challenges in the past 13 years with you guys. If even one of you from the audience gets inspired after listening to my story and starts following your dream or even takes a step forward towards it, I think it will be all worth it. Now, you know, when I started racing, I was just nine years old. At that point, people usually think that, oh, she started racing when she was nine. She must be really fearless. But let me tell you, that was not the scene at all. When I started driving, not even racing, I started driving. The first time I ever set into a go-kart, I was a little bit short for an adult go-kart. And I had to put pillows behind my back so that I could reach the pedals. And the steering was so close to me because I had pillows. And I, I actually, as soon as I got on the gas, um, I was so scared that I didn't know what happened. I went in directly straight, hit the wall. Not even a tire wall. There was just a wall. I went in directly, hit that wall. And I got so scared because it, the, the steering wheel hurt me in my stomach area since I was sitting so close to the st uh, steering wheel and it scared me to another level because I was just nine years old I didn't know what was happening and it just hurt big time and the sound of you know the crashing of the car and the wall it, it just mentally disturbed me and I was like no 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 this is too dangerous I can't do this and I was so scared so I, I was like, okay, I prefer looking out from my brother, looking you know, from outside to my brothers while they are driving. But the adventurous me inside always wanted to get back. And that's what I did. Because I know that if I hadn't gotten over that fear that day, I wouldn't have been the person I am today. And that is what I did. After getting back slowly, I had a marshal sit beside me to help, help me out, you know, slowly get over my fear, have control over the guard. They taught me one by one, my brother, my parents, the marshals, everybody was so dedicated enough to actually help me out and get over that fear. And once I got over that fear, I started getting so much better. I started pushing the carts even more and I started driving so much better. And the best part. I started beating my brothers when we were racing. Now then, that's when I, uh, as soon as I started beating my brothers, my dad asked me if I wanted to get into professional racing. Now, you wouldn't expect a father or even your parents in general to, you know, get you into a sport which is very male dominated at a professional level at the age of nine. But well, mine did. And the reason why he did that was because he knew that I had potential. He knew that I was very passionate about it. I didn't know that I was very passionate. I just enjoyed it. But he knew that if I worked hard, I would be able to get something out of it. And uh, when we went to see one of the races, just to get an idea of how things work, uh, I actually saw that there are very few girls. I, let's, let's say two or three girls maximum in the whole country at that point of time to be racing. And that's when I thought that, okay, you know, like, what do you expect? Usually in, in every sport, you have female category and male category. So that was something that I thought as well. But my dad told me that, no, if you're going to race, you're going to race with the boys. And that part, you know, got me so motivated that, no, now this is something fun because I love beating the boys. And uh, I got professionally trained and... You know, it, it's not, it was that whole period of getting professionally trained to getting into the sport professionally wasn't easy. I have had to had so many challenges that I faced, not just, you know, in the whole journey I had to face, you know, so many challenges like mentally being strong, physically being strong, having a face off with the society saying, oh, a girl can't drive. Oh, why is she, you know, driving a, in a male dominated sport? Why is she racing? I had to have a face off with my competitors on the track trying to you know shove me off trying to push me off but the most important thing was that I was passionate about it and when you were passionate about it everything else doesn't really matter and I remember the first time I ever sat into a professional go-kart and I started racing it just felt home 
it it felt like home to me because all the other stress of the world all the other worries were just off i switched them off once i was in the car once the helmet was on and i could just see how just the race track in front of me and how many competitors i need to overtake and how do i do that and it made me feel so comfortable while i was driving that everything else just didn't matter to me and okay now getting back to the old point how i started um, so as soon as i got done with the practices and everything it started making me feel at home and um, you know at the age of 9 in 2010 i was in my first ever professional race in hyderabad and that was an overwhelming feeling because i had never seen professional racers i had never raced professionally but at the same time i was super excited because this was something new and i wanted to always you know race with more people just other than my brothers and when i did that you know the society it was very uncommon for girls back then that oh she, she, girls can't ride and that was one of the biggest face offs that i had to had because they would come up to my parents and they would tell that you know why are you spending so much behind your daughter why are you you know letting her race in a male dominated sport she will get married one day and she'll leave like comments like this when i was just 9 people would talk about me like that i'm not trying to make it look big but there were people who were actually talking like that and uh, my parents were the ones that they told them that look doesn't matter if she's a girl as long as she is ready to work hard towards her dreams and as long as she is ready to dedicate herself to something we will be there to support her in whatever she needs and that support and that you know belief in me made me push myself so much better i started winning races and that's when you know i broke the stereotype that the boys who thought that oh she cannot race with us they all started believing in the fact that okay you know she is a good racer too and we should treat her as one of us and when they did that i stood on the podium standing on as the first position and as the winner of the race holding the trophy i had just one thought in my mind that it's not uncommon for girls to race and for girls to win and that's when i decided that let's turn this whole passion into a career i wanted to make sure that i continue winning races and you know getting that feeling of confidence when you hold that trophy i wanted that to happen with every other girl out there who is ready to dedicate herself and it doesn't have to be a big deal that oh a girl has won a race and as soon as i started believing in that i actually started getting even more confident i started pushing myself even more and when i won the championship it just made me feel like this is it this is the thing that i have always wanted to do but now it's not always been that easy you might have bad races you might have good races and that's what happened to me one challenge was over the other was already waiting for me when i turned 14 uh i had to shift into formula cars those are bigger level cars those those are gears and they ha- we have to drive them at such more even more higher speeds and when i did that there were more experienced drivers than me i was 14 and the most experienced driver over there was around 30 35 years of age and it was a very overwhelming feeling for me because you know you usually don't expect that right away after you winning races you have to start again from zero and that's what i had to do i had to start from zero because forget competing with them i couldn't even catch them because i had no experience about the car i had no experience how to race against such experienced drivers and that's when i had to start facing the mental doubts i had to have that challenge that okay now am i meant to be here should i be racing this cars and am i even able am i even able to gonna you know fight with those people but that's when you know i had to remind myself mentally and make myself believe in it that okay you have worked hard for the past few years you have proved it to yourself not to anybody else but you have proved it to yourself that you can do this and you have won races it's no big deal but you didn't win those races in the first year itself 
you had to patiently wait wait learn learn about the car learn about your competitors improve as a racer and that's when you got it after a few years you need to give yourself time to learn and find out where you lack and how to be a perfect person i'm not saying that i am perfect but how to give your 100% into something that you do and that's what i did i was like it's okay you don't have to be 100% right now you don't need to have all the experience right now give yourself time to learn about the car how to adjust the car how to set up the car according to your needs what are your competitors weak points and once i managed to do that in 2000 from 2014 to 2016 in 2016 when i actually won the rookie national rookie championship i knew that this is what you know dedication is all about and hard work is all about once you start once you plan things out once you know what you're doing i think the whole universe starts making it possible for you and that's what happened to me as soon as i won the rookie championship in formula 4 category um i got the biggest opportunity of my life and that was one of my goals and i've always believed in taking one step at a time you know life is very unpredictable but i always wanted to believe that okay once i've achieved this goal okay now once i have won this championship i need to learn this car okay now once i have learned this car i need to win the championship i need to win this place or i need to set a fastest lap time so always taking that one step at a time and patiently working hard towards my goals really helped me out to achieve one of my biggest goals at that point of time to become the first ever female racer to race in the JT Euro series and that my friends was such a great feeling because i i had always dreamt of those cars when i started racing and i told my parents that this is the car that i want to drive in india one day and i fi- i was finally able to drive those cars and those and that jk euro championship was all about all national champions coming together and racing against each other and i was one of them that proud feeling that i had that finally after working so hard for the last 6 years in 2017 i became the first and still the only female to have ever raced in that category now you might think okay it's all going so well for her but no one race i performed well people expected that okay in the next round she's going to come on to the podium but it didn't happen i started having technical issues in my cars so as i said challenges are just waiting for you you just have to go and head on against them and fight whenever they come and that's what i did again i was just like okay the challenges keep on coming for how long you know but i after so much of time i've realized that life is full of challenges but how we deal with them and how we overcome them is the most important thing and i am so confident in myself right now because i have gone through all of those challenges now coming back to what happened I used to have so many technical issues in my cars. For once, I actually drove with just two gears. We used to have six gears, and I just drove with two gears because the gearbox had an issue for the whole race. The next time, my car wouldn't start, and so many different challenges kept coming up. And I was like, "Why? Why this? When I have, when I know that I can do this, when I have the skill, when I have the..." ability to actually go out there and get onto the podium why does this have to happen right now you know that so that's when i feel that you know when whatever is supposed to happen it will happen you can't force it to achieve it so quickly when it's going to happen you ha- it will happen so you just have to keep believing in yourself i told myself that it's okay mira if you don't have the car right now you might have it in future but all you have to do is improve as much as i can as a person as a racer become even more mentally strong and learn even more about cars and technical stuff so that when you get the perfect car you can include both of them together and actually get the results out of it and you know what happened in 2019 i got a very last minute call uh, from malaysia in the from those organizers of south formula 4 southeast asian championship saying we have a seat for you if you want to come i had no idea it was i think a uh, thursday i had no passport 
my passport had expired i had no visa but they all managed it for me and on the next few hours i was in a flight to malaysia for my race first ever formula 4 international race now i had no experience with those cars those cars were totally new to me only the most experienced thing i had for that race was that i knew how the track was because i had driven there before and when i went there i just got one practice session and I, that was it i had no expectations from myself but only one expectation that don't have any expectations and just give it your 100% believe in yourself take your time learn the car and in just two days by the time i was racing i kept racing improving myself every race and on sunday i was finally confident that okay i know the car i know the situation i know my competitors weak points i know my strong points how do i get everything out on the track i just went 100% i switched off all the doubts all the thoughts out and as soon as i was on the race track i knew i had to win the race and i did in the females category and i was the first ever indian female to actually win internationally in formula 4 in the females category so let me tell you this is how things work as long as you believe in yourself everything else will work out but most importantly you need to have that passion you need to have that fire in yourself that i have to do this and i kept fighting with all those challenges i kept having a face off with all those challenges because i had that fire in myself that i have to achieve this goal i need to do this you know i had to be perfect in everything i had to give my 100% in whatever i was doing because i didn't want people to say that oh she is racing but she is not good at studies i had to make sure that i am at my 100% beat in my physical fitness mental fitness beat in my studies beat in my social life i beat on my race track you know everything i had to give my 100% because if not inside i would start doubting myself that what am i doing why am i doing this why can't i give my 100% everywhere whatever i'm doing and the only thing that i want to say in the end is there might be challenges there might be difficult times but as long as you believe in yourself most importantly as long as you are happy with what you are doing everything else will work out i am still racing in 2022 waiting for the opportunity to go out and race again but i believe in myself to actually be able to take myself out there and every time perform at my 100% you guys need to do the same thing and make sure that you are enjoying your life and just one thing that i want to say in the end is don't ever give up once you even think about giving up or you know once you take a step forward towards that everything else will go downhill so don't ever give up believe in your dreams and enjoy whatever you're doing appreciate whatever you have in life thank you so much